If it can't be stopped, our life on Earth will perish. So I wanted to find out the science behind these apocalyptic plot lines. So I went to talk to two experts in the field. First, I spoke to Dr. Richard Primack, a professor of biology. And then I spoke to Dr. Sheldon Glashow, a professor of physics and a Nobel laureate. I asked them what our biggest climate problems were in their opinion and what they saw as the options to improve these. Most, um, among the most pressing issues are things like um, acid rain. So acid rain is um, causing a lot of the forest to die back. It's, it's been solved to some extent, but it's still a serious problem. Um, also, excess nitrogen and air pollution harms forests and is probably causing a drying of our, of our forests. Other problems are in increasing suburbanization of, of eastern Massachusetts, so increased building of roads and, and um, uh, housing estates. And this is taking large blocks of forest and breaking it up into smaller uh, pieces, which are often not so suitable for animal life. Um, or it's not so suitable for large animals, not so suitable for a lot of birds, but is also surprisingly good for mice. And with increasing mice populations, there are often larger populations of ticks. And with these ticks come increasing uh, Lyme disease and other tick-borne diseases. A huge problem is uh, global warming. So Massachusetts is, is warming because of not only global warming, but also because of urbanization. Uh, but because of global warming, Massachusetts is, is very susceptible to rising sea levels. So with warming temperatures caused by people burning fossil fuels, uh, the polar ice caps are melting, and also the sea water is expanding as it, as it warms, and this is causing the, the sea levels in Massachusetts to, or on the, our coast, to rise by about eight inches already, and are, they're predicted to rise by another anywhere from uh, two to four feet by the end of the century. And there are many places in Massachusetts which are very vulnerable to rising sea level. I'm in particular metropolitan Boston. Something like Hurricane Sandy hit Boston. Um, a, a lot of metropolitan Boston would be underwater and we would have tens of billions of dollars worth of damage. Uh, coal production is still going on. Coal is being burned throughout the world uh, at faster than ever, especially in China. Um, it, so. I don't think we're moving properly. I think uh, things are going to get very bad. I'm very much a fan of nuclear energy, and of course I realize there are a number of problems connected with it. One of them is nuclear waste, and there a lot of the responsibility falls with the federal government for not providing a national waste site. Fukushima disaster, which was indeed a disaster, uh, in which some 30,000 people were killed in Japan. And I asked the students in the class how many of those people were killed uh, as a result of the, uh, the fact that the nuclear plants were damaged. And some of them say, thousands. The answer is none. It, you talk about coal, there are 50,000 deaths a year in, in, in the world from coal, from directly attributable to coal pollution. Uh, however, in countries like Germany, they're forced to turn off their nuclear plants because of public uh, 
because of public opposition. And they're very unwisely, I think, uh, moving away from uh, nuclear energy right now. They're turning them off. The same is true in other European countries, even the French who get 80% of their electricity, maybe 85 from nuclear, are thinking of reducing their commitment to nuclear because there's so much public opposition to do Fukushima and miseducation about Fukushima. Nuclear energy is virtually dead. There's two new plants, maybe three, being built uh, in the south. Uh, but that's nothing. I mean, there's more than that are being turned off, uh, especially now with gasoline prices, with fuel prices very low, uh, nuclear plants are not as effective financially as as burning coal or, or gas. So that, that is a big problem. People are turning off their nuclear plants. We shouldn't be doing that. The price of, of fuel will eventually go up. The uh, batteries will get better. Uh, they don't have to get all that much better. Tesla has shown that, but the Tesla car is very, very expensive. The uh, Leaf, uh, which uh, is a, a much less expensive car, is also purely electric. And electric cars can do a great deal. You have to make the batteries. Making the batteries for an electric car makes a lot of carbon dioxide itself. You have to fold that together with everything else. But uh, even the way things are now, which is with lots of coal being used, uh, electric cars would, uh, if used throughout America, would cut the carbon dioxide emission by 50% or so, which is a big start. And as we switch to, to, uh, <coughs> to uh, nuclear energy, which I, I think is very much in the future, uh, and to more solar and more wind, as the electricity comes from a non-polluting source, <coughs> will solve that problem from the transportation sector totally. After talking with them about the issues, I asked what they thought were some solutions that we could implement. The long-term solution to global warming, for example, might be to uh, build or to reduce our, our production of carbon dioxide. So ultimately, the only way we can stop the sea from rising uh, would be to, uh, for not only the United States, but for the countries of the world to, to form really strong treaties to reduce the production of greenhouse gases, to reduce the uh, product use of fossil fuels, and to stop cutting down tropical forests. We have to work with other nations. It only works if we can cooperate, especially with China. And It's likely that we can cooperate with China on, on this, uh, and with Europe. The options are many. Uh, energy conservation is good, and many things can be done to reduce our, 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 our current usage. We're sl switching, this country is switching to light emitting diodes from uh, incandescent bulbs. That, that can have a, a big, a big small effect, that is a big effect on energy use for lighting. In terms of dealing with the other problem that I mentioned, the problem of rodent populations and ticks and Lyme disease, there's actually a relatively simple solution which people seem unwilling to embrace, which is to reduce the deer populations. So the deer populations are too great in the Boston area, and we need to do something very active to reduce the deer population. By far, the simplest solution, and the one which I would favor, is to basically uh, hire professional hunters to come in and shoot a lot of the deer deers, and I think we really should go to that as our solution for reducing tick populations, but the other possibility is birth control, so, the, so that the female deers don't, don't reproduce, don't produce baby deer. So people are, for example, using more fuel-efficient cars, but their cars are still relatively inefficient, and they're driving them too much. But the, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is still increasing by about two parts per million every year, or even three parts per million. So even with all these measures we're implementing, it's still not actually having any effect on the rise of, of CO2 in the atmosphere. But we're not forming very strong treaties with countries like China and India. A lot of the, the, the really uh, major restrictions on the use of fossil fuels are really decades away from now, whereas they should be implemented right now. The goal of, of teaching in Kilachan or, or any university or any public school um, in the United States, and the, and the role also for, of scientists in terms of, of reaching the public, is to convince people that climate change is a very serious problem which really threatens the United States in a very serious way. It threatens our cities, our agriculture, our public health, our energy system, um, water. It's a huge problem 
and it's happening right now, and it's going to be coming greater in the future, and it's something if we don't deal with it now, the problem will be even greater in, in coming decades. So I think the goal of, of scientists, the goal of, of educators, the goal of teachers is really to convince the American public of the seriousness of this problem and, and, the, and the need to do something about it right now.